and welcome to Native Stories. Native Stories exists to share the voices of those connected to the land. Aloha mai kako. You are listening to Native Stories podcast. Mahalo for listening in. O wao o nanea loko ino ano papakulea mai ao. Noho ao ma kamuki. I'm nanea lo from Papakulea, now living in kamuki. Today we have Kaimana Kawaha, Belina Mai Kaimana, and this is another episode of what I call the Mauna series, where we're here live on Moku Ke'ave or Hawaii Island, holding space in solidarity with the Kia'i and protectors of Mauna Awa Kea, a sacred mountain in the peaceful protest against the 30 meter telescope that has been granted access to build on Mauna Kea, which is the largest mountain in the world as well. So we're going to have Kaimana introduce himself. Aloha mai no kako. Uh, o wau no o Kaimana Kawaha. He kupo ho'i no pi'i honua kilo Hawai'i. Uh, he haumana layo o wau. Maloko ke kula. Ma ke kula nui o Hawai'i mama anua. Um, aloha mai. My name is Kaimana Kawaha. I am a long-term ch- resident and child of the land of pi'i honua kilo Hawai'i. Um... I am a current master's student in Hawaiian language at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Aloha. Aloha mai. So, he's here today because he is a kumu at Pu'uhulu University. And so we're just going to get right into the questions. So, but first of all, how did you get involved in the Mauna Kea movement? Um... Well, if we go back to 2015 when all of it started to go down, um, I was in high school and I, I, that's when I started to really educate myself about what was going on, the political histories, the cultural histories, the um, scientific histories that TMT has done and the past telescopes, all of, all of that. Um, so I kind of really got started there. And then when I moved to UH Manoa, um, I made, I was in the right department in Hawaiian language and in Hawaiian studies to really be educated about what Mauna Kea and how sacred it is to us. Um, from there, it's just been my hoa, all of my friends, who have kind of pushed me. And I've been surrounded by them for a long time, and we all have the same mindset that we have to aloha aina, we have to continue to aloha aina. Um, and part of that is to care for our mauna and all of our, all of our aina. But when I think about um, how I really got involved, it's really through my hoa and really through education. Yeah. Mahalo. So are you a native speaker? I am not a native speaker, but I am able to um, converse in my mother tongue in Olalo Hawaii. Yes. My kai, did you learn over here on Hawaii Island or you learned at the University of Hawaii at Manoa? So I started when I entered high school. Um, I took Hawaiian language classes there under Kumu Avapuhi, Dudolao, and I never stopped ever since. I got into UH Manoa and as soon as I got there, it was Papa Olalo Hawaii and I, and I entered and yeah, I never looked back. Yes, me and Kaimana actually had a <laughs> Papa Olalo Hawaii <laughs> together, and that's how we know each other. Um, but, so, how long, oh, like, so you've been conversing for how many years now? Um, well, um, for, I'd say, being able to actually converse with people and understand and to express my mana'o, my thoughts, I'd say maybe like two years as like a fluent kind of speaker, yeah. I would have thought longer. So, who were your kumu besides the first one that you just mentioned? Oh, so besides kumu abu puhi dolao, um, I had her for four years at at my high school, um, and then as soon as I got into UH, kumu lalapa Kolga was probably one of the most influential people um, who helped me in my uh, progress of alalo, progress in alalo, and then. From him, I jumped to Kahikina Di Silva, who is probably, I've been so much, so influenced by her and her Olalo, that, uh, her and her Olalo, 
that um, yeah, she kind of has become my mo- my role model. My God, E, how did you end up coming back home to Hawaii Island and getting involved with um, the Pu'u Hulu Hulu University? Did somebody approach you, or did you kind of just volunteer your services because you felt a call to, you know, spread your ike? Well, like I said, it was through my hoa that everything, that everything that I do is, has been because of my hoa and my ohana and my aina. So when the when the Pu'u Hulu Hulu University, Pu'u Honua, Pu'u Hulu Hulu started, we were here on the first, um, the first nights that that we were there for establishment of the Pu'u Hulu Hulu until the, the time of the arrests and everything. And we're here today. But, um... In terms of getting involved with the university, Presley Amuk Kial Anuhe Amuk Seng, it was her that kind of needed help with uh, classes and just getting, just educating her Lahui. So I kind of jumped in that role um, and I started, and I had known her for a while, so I had told her that I could do Olalo Hawaii if that's what she needed. And so I kind of jumped into it and I loved it and I've been doing Olalo Hawaii ever since. That's awesome. And you also do Mele Hawaii um, classes as well, right? Yes, I do. So a big component of Pu'u Hulu Hulu is EA education. So what is EA education to you? Oh. <laughs> um, EA education. EA education to me is when we start to educate our Lahui with our own EA. When we, when we get to do it ourselves. When we have our EA to ourselves. Um, and not teaching somebody else's education. When we get to educate our own people our, about our own things, um, to me, that's what education is. And I interviewed Kala Johnson prior to this, and he said that he believes that Pu'u Hulu Hulu University is a true um, Native Hawaiian place of learning. Do you agree? And if so, um, is there anything more you can share on that? I I definitely agree with um, Kahala's statement. I would like to add that on top of it being a Hawaiian place of learning, um, it also is a Hawaiian place of healing because through learning, uh, um, we can heal ourselves. Um, learning our history, learning our olelo, all of that can also heal us as Kanaka from the generational trauma that we have faced. So when I think of whether or not it's a home place of learning, I also think about that it is a place of healing as well. I believe that as well, and I've seen it firsthand myself, people seeing that healing and then just even feeling that healing within others being here. Um, so do you teach only here or do you dabble in other places like on Oahu or yeah with your ohana well besides here I've been like I call kua I help all of I help some teachers on Oahu at the University of Hawaii Amano. so I help kumus there just because I need you know I just want to get the learning I want to learn I want the experience of how to teach so what kind of um, grades do you plan on teaching I mean, if that's something that you're looking forward to, like, do you want to teach at elementary or middle school or high school or, like, kula nui? Definitely the university. Um, do you have any special teaching methods that you use? Um, interactiveness. I like to have interactive courses where people can be engaged with what we're trying to learn and they can relate. Um, another thing that I try to use is, or another tactic that I like to use is to relate to the student or relate to the person that I'm trying to teach or help. Um, so if they speak pigeon, I can talk to them in pigeon. Um, if it makes it easy, if they're if they're a lavaya, I'm gonna use lavaya examples for them to understand. If they're if they're vaa people, we're gonna use ocean things for them to understand. Um, it's really catered towards the haumana when when we when I try to teach because I like I would like people to catch on faster and actually relate to what we're trying to learn. Yeah. Wow, you should be my kumu. <laughs> okay, so um who what kind of 
in a day at Pu'u Hulu, Hulu University for Papa um, Olala Hawaii or Papa Mele Hawaii, what kind of folks come to um, the classes? And yeah, can you share, elaborate on a day? So on a regular day, we'd have, well, on the regular class days that we have, there can be anywhere from 50 to 60 people in one class. And that's why I have to do the interactiveness because I can't teach them all. Um, but it's mostly, there are people in, within the Lahui, um, a lot of Kanaka have come here to learn about themselves and about their history, about their alalo and everything. So it's really heartwarming to know that they're here because they want to be here. Yeah. Definitely compared to just trying to finish their credits or get a grade. Um, I know that there's many other classes offered at Pu'u Hulu Hulu. Um, are there other Olala Hawaii Kumu or, you know, do you collaborate with other people who teach other classes as well? Um, I haven't really collaborated with other people, but I do know that a lot of our other Kumu, my, some of my Kumu, um, are also Kumu Olala Hawaii, so besides uh, Presley Kiala Anuhea, she's one of them. Uh Papa Yaoi Kaipu Baker, um, he's also one of them. Uh, his dad Kaliko Baker, he also teaches Olalo, and yeah, we kind of just take turns when we, when we, when we're all there. Yeah, we we kind of take turns teaching. Yeah, they're very interesting and interactive folks. Mm -hmm. I should go and take some classes too. Um, so after when, or after all of this, what do you envision, um, happening for the Lahui and in, in a sense for Olalo Hawaii or Mele Hawaii, um, what are your thoughts? Well, after, after this, after we win this battle, I believe that the Lahui well, we, we see that the Lahui has come closer and we all owe it. We all owe that to um, Aloha Aina. Um, we see the the aliveness. We see that Aloha Aina is alive and it's in our kanaka and that's the thing that's drawing us together. Yeah, that's the ume meganeti that's bringing us all together. Um, and I hope that that Aloha Aina is never going to stop so that as a Lahui we can always be together. Yeah. I remember um, a couple of days ago when I was sitting in your class and you were teaching us Mele Hawaii, um, you were talking about how our kupuna wrote about, so a lot of the songs were about sovereignty. And could you kind of talk to our listeners about that Mele and how it connects us to our nationalism? And how you feel that more people should kind of embrace that when we talk about Aloha Aina? So part of, like you, when you talked about overlapping classes or maybe conjoint classes between mine and somebody else's, um, one person that I think definitely our, our course, our papa overlapped was um, Kumule Lani Basham. Her papa was amazing. It was about Melalahui. And she talked about um, how she had collected 500 or 300, I don't remember the exact number, but it was a lot. And when we, when I heard about her, when I, when I heard her telling her story and telling us about her research, I was thinking about our class and about how I only just shared one Mele Lahui, yeah, that we kind of, that we were doing, trying to get it Laha to the Lahui. But um, those Mele Lahui are probably, one of the most important things to hold on to, especially because they connect us. Um, they, within those mele, they give us keys and they keep us, they keep us conscious about what being part of the Lahui is like. Um, they express our, they express how we feel about being in the Lahui. They express what the Lahui is like. Um, and that's, that's very personal, but it's very true to you as a Kanaka. Yeah. And I think that's, the best way I could probably explain that. <laughs> Do you, has being here um, ignited 
your writing skill, your Mele Hawaii writing oh, skills? Yeah. And have you, do you plan on writing some songs that kind of speak about Hawaiian nationalism and sovereignty and what's going on right now? So I'm definitely not um, an accomplished Hakumele. <laughs> I'm a very amateur Hakumele, but. I was very inspired by some of uh, my colleagues and uh, classmates and co-workers uh, Mele that they had hakud for this time and place. So Kremona Chalk's Mele um, was super beautiful. He had posted on Instagram. Go look it up. His Mele was, it was, it was beautiful. And Kaipu, like again, Kaipu Baker, um, his Mele also. Um, I have been working on one, but it's not, it's not done at all. It's not near done, but it, that's fine. Yeah. So it takes time for me. Yeah. That's exciting. I definitely will have probably like fifteen more years until I'm able to <laughs> haku a mele, but it's all good. So, what do you want more folks to know about Olalo Hawaii and mele Hawaii? And do you have any tips for them for, you know, getting in there? I mean, I know you mentioned just doing as much as you can, but you were mentioning how every class you kind of tell them something. Yeah, so I I always remind um, the Haumana, or yeah, I always remind the Haumana that our Olalo is kind of never good enough because we can always be better. We can always do better. We can always learn more. We can always start to um, do more research into what words really mean and when we use them. Um, and then once we get there, we can start expressing, we can start to think in that language. And from there, we can start to express ourselves in that. In that. And we do that through Malay. That's how we express. We can, we can speak Hawaiian all day, but that doesn't mean we're not expressing how we feel or expressing our manao. But when we use Malay, that's how we are showing our essence as a Kanaka to the rest of the world because of the melee, because that's where the emotion goes. And the big part of that is Olalo, because Olalo is the basis of it, yeah. I agree. I need to step up my melee game too. Okay, so any last thoughts that you want to share with our listeners or anything more that you want to share um, about Pu'uhulu Hulu or kind of I know you've been here like you mentioned from the beginning so anything about yeah this whole time that you've been here definitely if you're gonna come um, come with an open heart come with aloha aina um, come with aloha and come with aloha for your aina and for this aina so and also come with aloha for the lahui and be a part of the Lahui and participate and join the Lahui, rejoin the Lahui, I should say, um, because it really f makes you feel, it makes us feel like we're all one people doing our own thing and controlling our own lives. Um, and that's a big part of rec reclaiming and deoccupying Hawaii, um, yeah, so that we can have political control, political control over our lands so that we as a people can control Hawaii because it's been ours for the past 2,000 years, or for 2,000 years until recently, yeah. How can our listeners, if they want to come up to, you know, Pu'uhuluhulu, or if they want to donate monies or sign a petition, how can they get involved? You can definitely get involved on Instagram. Um, you can just type in Pu'uhuluhulu and we will pop up. And you can just you can go through DMs through there. You can just look at all of the pictures. We have a bunch of. You can go through our web our website puuhulu dot com, I believe. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of ways to get in contact with us, but those are probably the two most um, convenient and easiest. Yeah. Are classes set at puuhulu or how's the schedule like? So this the classes the class schedule for puuhulu University. Um, happen so this we usually have class every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because those are the busiest the busiest days when most of the Lahui can show up. So Wednesday we have there's there can be like five classes, and there's four different times. So if you times that, there's that's like twenty 
um, classes that's but you have four classes at the same time in one hour you have to pick which one you're gonna go to though um, so there's that's on Wednesday and then sometimes on Fridays to Sundays there can be anywhere from five to six classes each hour and that goes on for four hours so yeah that's that's our that's our university and I believe you can check their Instagram to their Instagram story to see the schedule of who's, who's teaching and um, what they're teaching about yeah yeah okay and also Kaimana is going to share melee with us so we're just going to give him a little moment to get set up um, can you tell us what melee you're going to be sharing and maybe who wrote it if you know so I'm going to sing the song Hano Hano o Hawaii um, written by Alice Kuulei Aloha Poina Ole Namakelua um, I learned this song from my kumu mele, my kumu ola loha ike kahi, uh, kumu ke ave lopes. So I wanted to sing it because we had learned it specifically for the reason of, specifically for this reason, yeah, for Mama Kale. Okay, here we go. If you guys are interested in following us, you can follow us on Instagram at Our Native Stories, on Facebook at Our Native Stories as well, on Apple Podcasts, Native Stories, and you can also download our app called Native Stories on all Android and Apple Store devices. Mahalo. Thank you for listening to us on Native Stories. If you have a story you would like us to tell or want to sponsor a future podcasts, location story, or walking tour, please email us at infonativestories.org. At